Ireland is currently going through its annual phase of slowly baking us to death. Although this year it's actually particularly bad because it's 30 degrees outside Celsius. And yeah, I'm just going to say F that noise. So I've decided to stay indoors in the exact same temperatures because nobody here has air conditioning. But I am going to stay in to talk about these. My Nikkor lenses that I have been accumulating over the last few years. Before we begin, all of these lenses are selected for various reasons, but the main three are image quality, compatibility, and usefulness. So as for image quality, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. I want lenses that kick out really nice images out of the back and onto the film or sensor. For compatibility, I needed to find lenses in Nikkor's line that would work on the F6, the D780, and the F3, because I didn't want to buy multiple lenses. And then in terms of usefulness, that's up to personal preference, but I think the focal lens I have here are particularly useful. For me anyway. So let's get started. So let's start off on the wide end with this laddie, the 24mm f2.8 AFD lens. Now this lens is really, really nice. It's small, it's compact, it's fairly light, and it has amazing image quality. You stick this on any camera and it's going to produce a really, really nice image. And in particular, if you're shooting this with black and white film, it looks really damn good. Now I haven't had this lens very long, but any images I've got out of it so far have been really nice. Next up, we've got something really unusual, which is the 2.8 centimeter F3.5 Nikkor. Now, this is a lens I've actually repaired, and I have a video on the channel where I re-greased this lens and took out the fungus, but I bought this lens mostly to collect with. I haven't actually shot an image with it yet. And the main reason I own this is because I want to buy a Nikon F, and I want to collect all of the original chrome-nosed centimeter lenses. And I found this locally for a tenner off some guy who was selling it, so it made sense to pick it up and restore it. But I haven't actually shot with it yet. Next up, we have the 35mm f2 AFD lens. Now this is a really nice, small, compact 35mm prime lens. And yes, it is technically not as sharp or not quite as technically good as the AFS versions of this lens, the 1.8 and the 1.4, but those lenses are much bigger and a good bit heavier compared to this. Also, this is fully compatible across all of my cameras and it produces a damn good image. There's people who say that this lens has better micro contrast than the AFS versions and produces better black and white images. I don't know, I don't own the AFS version, so I can't test that. But I will say that this does produce a really nice image on black and white film and on any digital camera you have. So it's a really nice lens, highly recommended. I'm pretty cheap too at 200 quid. Next up, we have the trifecta of 50 millimeter lenses with the 50 1.2 AIS, the 50 millimeter F 1.8 AF, this is the non-D version, and the 50 millimeter 1.8 AFS lens. Now, out of these three 50 millimeter lenses, which one would I recommend you buy? And it's actually the cheapest one of the lot, the 50 1.8 AF, because the lens is hella cheap you can find these for 70 quid used if you're lucky. And they're absolutely everywhere. Nikon made millions of these lenses. And its image quality is actually really quite solid. It has the manual focus and aperture ring for older film cameras, but it also is an autofocus lens, so it'll work on you know, the newer DSLRs and produce a really nice image. Now you might think the 1.2 is a good lens to buy. And honestly, it isn't. It actually kind of sucks. 
Okay, I need to qualify that statement. Uh, the 51.2 sucks ass at 1.2. It's soft, it's mushy, and getting anything in focus with this short 90 degree focus throw at 1.2 is basically impossible. Now this lens at f2 is actually really damn good. I'd say it's arguably the sharpest of all three at f2. But if you're gonna buy this lens for 400 quid to shoot it at f2, you're absolutely cracked. Just buy a 51.8 AF lens for less than a quarter of the price. Or for about half the price, you can pick up a used 1.8G lens, which will produce a really nice image as well. So when it comes to 50 millimeter lenses, I just cannot recommend the 51.2. Now I bought it more for to have, it's more of a collector's lens, but I don't really use it that often and I don't recommend it. Get yourself an AF lens if you want a really nice 50 millimeter. But other alternatives are the F2 AIS version, which is a really nice lens. You can also get the 1.4 AIS and the F1.8 AIS as well. So next up we have a really useful lens, which is the 60 millimeter F2.8 Micro Nikkor. Now this is an extraordinarily useful lens. It can be used as a normal lens on full frame cameras, but if you put it on a DX camera, it becomes something like an 85 to 90 millimeter lens. So it's actually a really good lens on DX as well for portraiture. It works great on film, it works great on digital. In fact, it works particularly well on digital because I use this as my scanning lens for converting my negatives into digital when I'm DSLR scanning, but it's just a really, damn good handy lens to have. I was able to pick this up for around 300 quid on the gray market, brand new. Now I'm fairly sure Nikon has actually discontinued this lens, but there should be some new copies floating around if you can find them. Although you can pick it up used pretty damn cheap. And I would argue it's one of the best macro lenses you can buy on the Nikon F mount. Just a really good useful lens, highly recommended. Next up, we have two 85 millimeter lenses. We have the 85 millimeter 1.8 AF lens and the 85 millimeter F 1.4 AF D lens. Now this is the lens that everybody lusts after because this AF D lens has this huge glass front element and it just, look at that, it's just like a black hole for capturing light. And then you've got the nice large rear element as well to shine all that goodness onto your film or your digital sensor. You know, everyone lusts after the giant front element on this lens. The question is though, is it actually a good lens? And the answer is, yeah, this is a really good lens. Um, at 1.4, it's okay. It's not utterly sharp at 1.4, but you stop that down to F2 and this is going to be a brilliant lens. The only problem is it's quite large. It's fairly heavy. But the main issue is it's hella expensive. Now I was able to get a really good deal on this and I got it for around 420 euros. So it was a pretty good deal to pick this up second hand. But the main kicker with this is that instead of buying this lens, you should honestly buy the 85 millimeter AF 1.8 lens instead. It's much smaller, it's much more compact. Uh, it's plenty sharp for anything you could want to do. Now I do know the G version of this lens is actually sharper, but this 85 is really nice. It's also compatible across all the cameras I want to shoot. However, there is an issue with this particular lens and this doesn't have it, but if you're going to buy a 1.8 AF lens, make sure to get the D version. This is not the D version. And the reason you want the D version is not because it's better optically, but the D version of the lens has better sealing around the rear because these are rear focusing lenses. And on the AF non-D version, big gaps form in here as the lens focus and it tends to suck in dust into the lens. So if you're gonna pick one of these up, do your best to find the D version, not the AF version. They tend to sell for around the same price. So you can generally find the D version at no extra cost. This particular one though doesn't have the dust issue. I think this was just left in the bag for a really long time. So I was able to pick this up very cheap for under 150 quid. So I got a screaming deal on this lens. Although it is going to be sold now that I have the 1.4D.
Next up, we have probably my favorite Nikon lens ever made, the God tier OG absolute best, cannot be topped for portraiture, the 105 millimeter F2 DC Nikkor. This lens absolutely slaps. And honestly, this lens slaps everything else Nikon made out of the water. Like it just smokes everything, including the E version of the lens, if you're looking for certain characteristics. Uh, it's an incredibly nice lens. It has beautiful bokeh. It's perfect for portraiture. It has the really nice defocus image control, which allows you to bl selectively blur the background more or less, depending on what your aperture setting is. So, for example, if I'm shooting a portrait of a person, I want the person's entire head to be sharp and nice and crisp, I might shoot this lens at f5 or maybe f4. I'll then set the defocus control to f4 to match it, and I'll set it to rear, and that will cause the background to soften up a bit more. And thus the lens can produce a softer, more blurry background, even at smaller apertures. And this is the advantage of isolating your subject while still maintaining nice face sharpness and nice overall sharpness of your subject. Because an issue with these you know, short telephoto prime lenses is that a lot of people go crazy wide on the aperture to blow out the background. And then you get this weird issue where, you know, their face is not sharp. You have one eye in focus and the other eye is starting to grow out of focus. And like, you start going cross-eyed looking at the images. I really don't like those at all. So this allows me to get both the soft background and the nice sharp subject with that separation. Although it does have a little bit of CA wide open. So if you are going to shoot this wide open, maybe, you know, consider uh, stopping it down a little bit and get rid of some of that CA. But this is an amazing performing lens. But also interestingly, my version of the lens came with the bunny ears attached. And if you didn't know, you can actually get these attached to any AF Nikkor lens. And this allows the bunny ears here to couple to the oldest metering systems. So I could technically use this lens on a Nikon F and it will couple to the meter correctly. And I could shoot this perfectly fine on anything from a Nikon F all the way up to the latest DSLR, which is the D780. So it's a hell of a lens, it's hella compatible, and it produces a hella good image. So next up, we have this little gem right here, the Nikkor 135mm f 2.8 AI. Now the reason I went for the AI one was because it was cheaper than the AIS version and I believe they have the same optics. Now this lens is an interesting pick because it's a very small telephoto lens which is exactly the reason why I bought it. Now it does produce a lovely image, it's f2.8 and it is a short telephoto. But the real reason is actually for usability because this lens has the same filter thread size as a lot of these smaller prime lenses. And having the same filter tread size is actually really nice. So if I'm heading out and taking some shots and I want to bring, you know, a 35 and a 50 or maybe a 24 mil with me, I can just throw this in the bag as well. And I don't have any compatibility issues or filter issues at all. And it extends my reach a fair bit. And being an AI lens, it has a really nice long focus throw. So accurate manual focusing is actually quite easy on this. Next up, we have one of the God tier Nikkor lenses, and that is this beautiful piece of optical brilliance, the 180 millimeter F 2.8 AF lens. Now, if you go looking at these lenses, there's actually three versions of it. All of them are the same optically as far as I know. The reason I picked this one is because this is the final version and it has the really nice sort of Nikon crinkle coat finish that they put on a lot of their really high end AFD lenses. Now you might ask yourself, why would you buy this lens? You know, it is a 400 euro lens, which is pretty expensive. And it's a 180 millimeter F 2.8. You know, why not just buy an 80 to 200 F 2.8 and gain all the focal lengths, including this one? Well, the reason is this lens 
absolutely smokes almost all the 70 to 200 zooms. Depending on what you're looking for, this lens absolutely just kills it. It works great on film, it works great on digital, it's really nice. It focuses surprisingly fast, but it also has a really nice long manual focus throw, which is excellent. And overall, it's just a really good lens. However, there is one downside to this lens, and that is if you look inside the rear of the lens, between the lens mount and the aperture blades, there is no glass. So if anything falls down the lens barrel while you're swapping the lens, it'll hit the aperture blades and it can break them. So you do need to be careful when using this lens out in the field if you're planning to swap it. It's something to keep in mind. But I can highly recommend this 180mm f2.8 lens. Like you buy this, it's just an absolute beast. It's also a really good portraiture lens. You're doing headshots on this. There's just something about the images that just look otherworldly. They just look incredible and deep and they almost you can touch the images themselves. Like it's just amazing. I can't get over how good it is. Absolutely a top tier Nikkor lens. This is a very specialist lens, and it is the 200mm f4 Micronicor. Yes, a 200mm one-to-one -one macro lens. Now, this is an expensive lens. It's over a thousand euros secondhand. I managed to find this with the lens hood and in the box from a secondhand dealer here in Europe. And I have to say, this lens is hella good. It is an astonishingly sharp lens. It is just absolutely amazing for macro work. So the main benefit of having a 200mm macro lens is the incredible working distance. So let's say you want to take a photograph of a bug. Now, if you wanted to use a 60mm macro lens and you wanted to shoot it at one to one, because this only has like a 21 centimeter working distance and side note, working distance is measured from the sensor. So you've got from the sensor to your subject, you've got 21 centimeters. So you're gonna be like, here trying to focus on the damn thing and you're going to be right up its behind it's either going to fly off in fear or you're going to be casting a really big shadow on the bug and a macro with the bellows extension factor you're just not going to be able to get the shot that easily you know a short macro lens is good for film scanning and duplication work but if you're going to be doing like bugs or nature macro photography this is what you want for the working distance and that is because this is a working distance of half a meter so that means I can actually be back here and be able to macro one-to-one -one on this lens. It is a really good thing to have. And side note, this has the same working distance as the Lauer probe lens. Now that's a two-to-one macro, so it's a different use case and it's also a probe lens. It's also much darker at f14, but a lot of use cases for that can actually be done with this. You know, you can shoot into water with this really easy, so long as you're using a polarizer to be able to cut out glare and all that kind of jazz but owning this lens is really nice because of that incredible working distance because you can just you know back way the hell up from your subject and get amazing images now with that this lens is a very expensive lens it's also a very technical lens and it is a highly specialized lens this is not something you buy for everyday shooting you buy this knowing you're willing to spend the money to get those specialist lens properties now, one thing I do want to point out on this lens is that there is a tiny fault, and that is with this manual to auto switching ring. A lot of people don't push in the button 100% of the way to switch it. And if you don't do that and you end up wrenching it, it builds up torque and the plastic actually snaps here by the little button. And when that happens, you can't switch modes anymore. So sometimes you see these showing up super cheap because they're either locked to manual mode or autofocus mode. Whether you want to buy a broken lens is up to you, but personally, I didn't want to, so I was willing to spend the extra cash. But as a macro lens, this thing is absolutely hella good. Now for scanning film, it's actually kind of useless because if you want to scan film, you have to deal with that giant working distance. So you end up having to mount the lens like way up above the negatives and depending on your stand, it could be really wobbly. But for like nature, macro photography, bug photography, 
and just general like 200 millimeter work because it's also a 200 mil f4 so at medium distances it's just a really really nice lens i've used this quite a lot a lot more than i thought i would and i absolutely love it And lastly, for the prime lenses, we have my longest prime lens that I currently own, which is the 300mm f4 AFD lens. And this is a hell of a lens. The images that this thing can kick out are absolutely incredible. For medium nature photography, this thing just kills it. It's a really nice lens. It has just a gorgeous rendering, which honestly I think is due to its lower element count meaning that the optical design is quite simple and thus it doesn't mangle the image too much or flatten out any depth information. It just, it's just a really nice lens to use. Now, it is built extremely well. It has a lovely crinkle coat finish, but also it's pretty heavy. You know, this is a, a chunky boy. It takes 82 mil filters, which are quite large, although it does have a very nice built-in metal lens hood. However, it does have a filter drawer, which takes the Nikon 39 millimeter filters. I actually do have an orange filter on the way to be able to use this lens with black and white film and increase the contrast a little bit. Now on manual focus cameras, this lens works really well. However, if you're using a split image focusing screen, it tends to black out one part of that really easily. So I have an acute matte screen that I stick in the F3 when I want to use this lens manually and it works great manually because it has the aperture ring, but it is also a autofocus lens which means if you just slip it into autofocus mode, lock the ring, it will work fine on all the autofocus Nikkor film cameras. But there is a caveat with this lens, and it's, uh, it's unique to this particular lens, is that sometimes these can get squeaky autofocus mechanisms, and they tend to do this. And they can kind of squeal at you. That'll draw attention to you if you're shooting, by the way. People will be like, what the hell is that thing? Also with this lens, like the 180 millimeter, it doesn't have any glass between the lens mount and the aperture blades. So you could end up dropping something down here and damaging the aperture blades if you're not careful. So do be aware of that. As for like autofocus speed, you might think, you know, a 300 mil lens at autofocus is too slow, but you know, you stick this on a modern DSLR or an F6 and this lens hauls ass, you know, it's not a slow lens at all. But if it is a little slow, you can actually speed it up using this really interesting continuous like focus limiter. So you can actually just loosen this and then move it to whatever position. So if I lock it to here, now the lens can only focus from infinity down to five meters. It gets even more interesting because you can actually move it in the opposite direction as well, which means that the lens can only focus from closest focus of two and a half meters up to five meters. So you can heavily limit the focus travel if you want to make it a little quicker to focus on autofocus bodies. It's a really nice lens, highly recommended if you're looking for a, you know, decent telephoto lens for some basic wildlife and if you want something for a manual film camera. And make sure to get the AFD version of the lens with this focus limiter. Don't get some of the earlier versions. There's a lot of 300 millimeter F4 versions. This is the one you want with the drawer and the focus limiter and ideally the one with the crinkle coat finish as well. Highly recommended. So now to talk about zoom lenses, and I only actually have two zoom lenses, but the first one is this bad boy here, which is the 35 to 70 f2.8 D series lens. This is another screwdriver lens, once again, have a bit of a thing for screwdriver lenses. And this is a really interesting lens because it's an old school push-pull zoom. Now this lens is actually the precursor to the 24 to 70 AFS lens. So this is the original kind of pro 2.8 zoom lens. Nikon had a full series of 2.8 zooms. You had the 2035, the 3570 and the 80 to 200. 2.8 AF lenses. I bought this because it's a very good travel lens. You know, it is pretty heavy, but it gives you a nice little zoom range. It produces really good images. Obviously they're not 
anywhere near prime level quality, but for a zoom lens, it's pretty solid. And for travel photography, it's perfectly sufficient. However, it does have the issue where the focus ring turns with the autofocus and the front filter thread rotates as you focus. So if you're using polarizers, that can be hella annoying. But it does have a trick up its sleeve with a macro mode. So if you extend it out to 35 millimeters, you can then push the little silver button in and then it has a kind of built-in extension tube, which allows you to get super close to a subject. Now you are absolutely going to be shoving this thing right up the ass of whatever you're trying to shoot macro of, but it's a handy feature to have if you're in a pinch and you want to focus a little bit closer. However, it only works at 35 millimeters. Now you might have noticed that the zoom on this is kind of backwards because it's 70 millimeters when collapsed and 35 millimeters when it's fully extended, when you push the lens out all the way. So it feels a little weird to use because you're on your camera and you're looking through the lens, and that's through an SLR, and you do this, and then the field of view gets wider. So a little bit weird, feels a little strange to use, but does produce a really nice image. If you're looking for kind of a fast 2.8 zoom that is highly compatible on Nikons, this is really your only bet, you know. It does have the aperture ring, so you can use it on any camera that uses AI apertures including an f2 if you have the right prism so it does work really well it's a pretty good zoom you know for a zoom lens very nice uh, very convenient and now we have the last lens one of my favorites if not my absolute favorite lens we have the monstrosity the 200 to 500 f 5.6 afs vr e lens now this lens is an absolute goddamn marvel i was able to pick this up for a thousand quid second hand and let me tell you this is absolutely worth it on any camera i've used it on this is my ultimate wildlife lens it's a 200 to 500 constant aperture zoom it's heavy well okay in terms of actual like you know reaching out to 500 minutes it's actually a pretty light lens but it's a heavy ass lens to use if you're shooting birds and stuff all day with it it is a 5.6 so it is a little bit slower but it is an absolute hella good lens it has an absolute killer feature with the vr the vr on this thing is just absolutely abnormal I've been able to shoot this at 500 millimeter fully extended at 1 50th of a second and get a tack sharp image. That's how good the VR on this thing. It's an absolute freak of a lens in terms of how good the VR is. Now you might ask yourself, given the fact I've talked about compatibility, why on earth would I buy an E lens? Because it doesn't work on film cameras. And you're mostly right, but also mostly wrong. So when it comes to mounting this on a film camera, the only one I use this on is the F6. Let's be honest, if you're trying to manually focus a 500 millimeter lens on like an F3, you're just not gonna be able to do that. So on the F6, it auto focuses perfectly because it's an AFS lens and the F6 is compatible with AFS lenses. The F6 is also fully compatible with the VR. So you can use the VR, take advantage of that amazing vibration reduction, which is really good when you're limited on ISO when you're shooting film. But importantly is that while this is an e-lens, if you're shooting this on an incompatible camera for e-lenses, the aperture actually stays locked wide open. So when I'm shooting this on the F6, it's actually locked at F5.6. And let's be honest here. If you're shooting film at 500 millimeters, you're going to need all the light you can get. So you're going to be cranking that lens wide open regardless. So in reality, with this lens, the fact that no film camera can stop down its aperture is just a non-issue in reality. And all the rest of the features, you know, it's reasonable size and weight for what it can do, the 200 to 500 focal length, the amazing VR, the quick autofocus. This lens is absolutely worth sacrificing that little bit of compatibility to get. If you want to shoot like birds and stuff on a film camera, you've got an F5 or an F6 that can use the VR or an F100, which I've also used with this. Highly, highly recommend this particular lens. It's just an absolute beast.
and that wraps up all of my Nikkor lenses that I use. Now, as for future lenses I want to buy, there are a handful, and of course there's a handful because, let's be honest, this is pretty top quality gas we've got going right here. But I have been looking at the 20mm f2.8 AFD lens. Uh, having something a little wider than 24mm could be quite nice, and that 20mm looks particularly good from sample images and reviews I've seen. I've also been kind of eyeing up a 16mm fisheye lens. It's also an f2.8 lens. Um, mostly because I've never owned a fisheye lens and I think learning to compose with one would be pretty cool and quite the challenge as well. And then the final lens I've been eyeing up, which is the most lunatic one, and I'll have to be very drunk when I order it, is an 800mm f5.6 AIS lens. Now you can find them for like under 2,000 quid. And for an 800mm 5.6, that just sounds amazing. However, it's like twice or three times the weight of the 200 to 500 and it's like twice or three times the size so it'll be a hella difficult lens to use and absolutely be you know limited to a monopod so the v lack of vr won't be too much of an issue but i still want that lens it'd be absolutely cracked to own an 800 mil lens you get some amazing shots can you imagine that on the f6 matrix metering on an ais lens 5.6 800 mil photographing birds and wildlife. I want to experience that for myself. Also, I think this video demonstrates why I chose the Nikkor system really well because all of these lenses are absolute top class lenses. You know, Nikon's been making lenses for a very long time. And with the F mount, there's so many different variants of lenses, so many generations, so many different technologies that while it can be confusing to pick up lenses, you can build for a very reasonable sum of money, a very nice, very complete lens kit. Now, obviously I've gone a little overboard and bought some kind of crazy lenses here and there, but most of these lenses, you can build a really nice lens kit for under 300 euro a lens, second hand. And these things have been built to last. You know, some of these lenses are absolute tanks. You could hammer nails in with them. So that is why I love these lenses. Maybe let me know what ones I've missed and what ones I should consider in the future. Keeping in mind, you know, image quality, price, compatibility, and just usefulness as well. And with that, we're going to sign out this video. See you next time. Yeah.